take my advice and sell your Bitcoin and buy some gold or buy some silver. If you really want to get out of the fiat-based system, if you're worried about inflation, and you should be, because it's going to get much, much worse, we are at the tip of the iceberg. There is no fighting inflation. You know, again, I was doing this debate with this guy today on the value versus momentum stocks, and he was saying, well, you know, it's easy to fight inflation. The Fed just has to raise interest rates high enough, and then they're going to win the fight against inflation. Yeah, easier said than done. How are they going to do that? How are you going to raise interest rates sufficiently high to fight inflation when you've got an economy so loaded up with debt? Volcker was able to do it because we didn't have nearly as much debt and we had a much stronger economy so we could handle 20% interest rates. We can't even handle half of that. Hell, we can't even handle 5%. I doubt we can even handle two. So we are in no position to fight inflation. So it's not going to be fought. Inflation is just going to win by default without a fight. So you need to get out of US dollars. You need to get into other assets. But what you don't need is Bitcoin. In fact, if you own Bitcoin, you need to get out of that too. So take a look at what's going on. Buy real gold, which is making new highs, or buy silver and get out of your fool's gold. The US economy, extremely weak. We are hemorrhaging red ink with these massive deficits. These deficits would have been weighing down the dollar. The dollar had already started to decline and it was declining prior to the Russia invasion of the Ukraine. So I think the combination of a weakening US dollar, a weakening US economy, and the fact that all of the rate hikes were already factored into the price of gold, and the gold market was already looking behind the rate hike mountain into the rate cutting valley, because after the Fed finished the rate hike cycle, which I think was gonna be a very truncated cycle, it may have even ended before it began, because even the tiniest of pins would prick this bubble. And as the US economy moved into recession, the Fed would reverse course, cut rates, return to QE. And I think the gold market already started to factor that in. And so since the Russia situation has now caused this safe haven rally into the dollar, the dollar index now at 99, in fact, just above 99, that is a headwind for gold. Had the dollar index continued to fall, that would have been more bullish for the price of gold. Also, prior to what just happened in Russia, there was a major rotation underway out of US stocks into European stocks. European stocks looked extremely attractive relative to US stocks. Much better valuations, much better prospects for earnings, and in a rotation out of momentum into value, Europe had a lot of the value stocks. It was the US that had all these big tech stocks and overpriced momentum stocks and meme stocks. So a lot of money was already flowing into European stocks out of US stocks, which was putting downward pressure on the dollar, which was bullish for gold. And also we were seeing a movement into commodities, which would include gold and silver. And so I think that the price of gold might already be higher than 2055, even if Russia had never invaded the Ukraine. Now, they did invade, and so we won't know the counterfactual. The price of gold is going up as it should go up, but because of this event, you have people that think, well, that's the only reason gold's going up when it's not. And since they know that this conflict won't go on forever, they just assume that eventually when we have a resolution, we have some type of treaty, there's some kind of compromise and maybe somebody saves face, maybe nobody saves face, but at some point there will be a resolution. It's not gonna go on forever. And a lot of people think, well, as soon as this thing gets resolved, the price of gold is gonna crash. And so I'm not going to buy these gold stocks based on a temporarily inflated gold price if the gold price is going to tank in the future and therefore these gold stocks won't have the opportunity to sell their gold at these higher prices because gold stocks don't represent today's price of gold. They represent the future price of gold discounted to the present 
and not just the future price of gold, but the future cost of mining the gold because you're trying to figure out what the profits are gonna be for your gold mine and then discount them to the present. So if you think that the gold price is gonna collapse, once we have some type of resolution of this Russia situation, you are reluctant to pay up for the gold stocks, but people buying gold, well, they're not reluctant. They're just buying the gold. And so that's why we're seeing this divergence. But again, I think that even if we got a resolution, that's not bearish for gold, it's bullish. Now, let's say sometime in the next few days, I don't expect this to happen, but let's say we do have a resolution and everything is fine and the sanctions are off and Russia pulls out of the Ukraine, whatever. The price of gold will probably drop on that day. No question, maybe it'll drop 50 bucks. Maybe it'll drop $100, I don't know. But it won't stay down before too long, whether it's a matter of days or maybe a matter of weeks, gold will make a new high because gold is going up regardless of what goes on with Russia and the Ukraine. This is just a bunch of noise. This is not the actual story. The real story is one of inflation. And the inflation story is getting bleaker and bleaker for America and other countries and brighter and brighter for gold. Now, a lot of people are saying, oh, but Peter, what's happening right now in Russia, that's inflationary because it's driving up oil prices and it's driving up commodity prices in general, whether it's agriculture or look at the industrial metals, look at nickel. I mean, the price of nickel has just doubled. I mean, copper too is at a record high. Interestingly enough, the two metals that you need to make batteries for electric cars are copper and nickel. And of course, everybody is looking at electric cars as an alternative to gas guzzling cars. Well, the cost of those cars is gonna skyrocket based on the higher cost to produce those cars. You know, Biden's suggestion that I talked about in my last podcast, that Americans just run out and buy an electric car and that's the solution to high gas prices. Well, the cost of buying that electric car is gonna be increasingly out of the reach of most Americans who will have no choice but to pay those higher gas prices or just not drive, maybe ride on a bicycle. But as I said on the last podcast, these price increases in and of themselves aren't inflationary because inflation isn't caused by prices going up. Inflation causes prices to go up. It's not the other way around. What normally happens where you don't have the monetary expansion, which is the inflation, if some prices go up, well then other prices go down because you don't have an unlimited amount of money. So money you spend buying certain goods or services is money that you don't have to buy other goods and services. So the overall price level doesn't change. Some prices go up and other prices go down. So if you have a surge in energy prices, in food prices, in rent prices, some other prices have to go down. And the prices that go down are for a lot of the goods and services that people forego. People stop buying because they're spending so much of their money on food, energy, and rent. And what that means is a recession because as people have to stop spending money on certain things so they can still afford to eat and put a roof over their head, people that earn a living in the industries that rely on that discretionary spending, they lose their jobs. So you get a recession. So what is happening right now is going to produce a recession. Now it's the government that is going to produce the inflation because that's how the government responds to recession is they create more inflation. They print more money. And in fact, what they often think of is, oh, oil is more expensive. That means consumers have to pay more money for gas. Food is more expensive. So going grocery shopping is gonna be more expensive. We need to create more money. We need to give people more money so they can afford to pay those higher prices. That's what causes the inflation, not the price increases. In fact, I did some debate with some guy today. It was a value stock versus growth stock debate. And one of the things we talked about was war and inflation. And he pointed out that wars cause inflation. And I said, no, wars don't cause inflation but wars often result in inflation, but it's not the wars themselves that cause it. It's the way governments finance wars. That's inflation. Because during a war, governments tend to print a lot of money 
to pay for the war because it's easier than raising taxes and borrowing money can take longer. So the quickest way to pay for a war, if you're on a fiat system, is just to print up the money and then you can use the money you print to pay your soldiers and to buy whatever materials you need to make weapons. And so it's not the war itself that is inflationary, it's how it's paid for. It's paid for with inflation. And so if we've got a war now with Russia, even if it's not a shooting war, even if this is an economic 